Chamisa Nelson, MDC Alliance, votes received 2,147,436, which constitutes 44.3% of the polls. Munangagwa Emerson Bambuzo, ZANU PF, 2,460,463 votes, 50.8%. Polls that have been announced have not been verified by us, so the results are fake. With the due respect of Justice Chikumba, that is the dumbest thing that she has ever said. <laughs> Welcome to this edition of Free Talk, a program proudly brought to you in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation and Heart and Soul TV and Radio. This week we are discussing the issues about elections in Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. Now we're going to be going into details as to how they run the elections. We are going to be asking the questions that matter about allegations in voter fraud and manipulation of elections. Free talk. We believe that dialogue is the best way to building a nation. This afternoon, I'm joined by Leticia Kazembe, one of the longest serving members in the Electoral Commission of Zimbabwe. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Commissioner Kazem, for joining us. Um, you are one of the, I, actually you are the longest serving uh, member in the electoral systems of Zimbabwe. Yes. Can you just share with us briefly how has been your journey in the elections of Zimbabwe? Um, as a political scientist, it's been quite um, eye-opening. It's, it's been quite exciting for me and I have learned a lot about uh, human relations and relationships as they pertain to elections. I have learned quite a bit on the laws that govern elections. I'm not saying about article this and that and that, but the nitty gritties in terms of application. And um, I have get, gained quite a lot of experience from relating with parliamentarians, from relating with the powers that be, that is the presidents and the ministers and so on. And I have also gained quite a not, lot of knowledge since I became a commissioner in 2001 by visiting other countries and observing how they conduct elections. And because of that, of that experience, I was part and parcel of the body that looked at the um, our regional electoral commissions forum of the SADC on the principles and guidelines that uh, principles of election management, monitoring, and elections. You, you and uh, really, it's been it's been exciting engaging with people and watching the people grow from being minors to become voting adults. Voting adults. That's yeah. right. It's been quite exciting. You, and you saved. You saved in the, in the Electoral Commission and now ZEC. 
What yeah, happened? I served in the Electoral Supervisory Commission. Oh, yes, and now yes. there. And now it's there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are the major highlights and differences between the Electoral Supervisory Commission and ZEC? Yes, the Electoral Supervisory Commission, as the, as the name implies, was actually supervisory. We did not run elections as such. That was done by the Registrar General of Voters. The Registrar General, the office actually ran the elections. And in terms of supervising, why we are called that, we were supervising all bodies that have to do with elections. There's Registrar General, the, 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 the commission that was in charge of delimitation, and the one that was in charge of ensuring that we had enough, I mean, the electoral body had enough, the way with all the personnel, um, the equipment, and everything. So we're like overall overseers of the electoral processes. That's what we did. And at the end of that, we realized that the situation everywhere else in the world was changing. And therefore, we propositioned, we actually sent, a, sent a, a petition to Parliament and to the President that for now, the time was now ripe to move from being an, a supervisory commission to be a hands-on and actually conduct the elections ourselves. And hence, uh, in 2005, 2006, the change of the law that we have the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission and that would be running the elections instead of the Registrar General. But in terms of the voters and registration, it was still done by the Registrar General until we had gained enough experience to actually register them as we were doing for 2013 and so on. And with the changes, the major changes in the constitution in 2013 when we got the new constitution. Do you think so, that there's, a, there's been a difference uh, in terms of transparency and accountability in running of elections uh, from taking that from the Registrar General's office to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission? I don't know whether transparency is the term to use, but the, the, the nice thing was that everything to do with electoral processes was now in the office, in one office in the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. Of course, we would get the registered voters because in terms of age, that they should be uh, along the line, along the way, the, the, the age change moved from 21 to 18. So it, means, it meant that we had to relate with that particular body so that they give us the names. But in 2013, because it was too close, we still had to revert to the Registrar General to assist us in actually in the, in the provision of the voters' rolls and so on and whatever. There has been change in that everything now is under one body rather than there was also a commission on boundaries there was also a commission on um, uh, putting together all the materials as i indicated that were needed for so there were four bodies that, that were actually involved initially and now everything is now under one mode. then you can synchronize and be in a position to supervise all the processes particularly now in the last one that was the first one when we actually put together the the, the, the voters role ourselves what, what what has made you survive all those years as part as and as now the only remaining long-serving uh, elections commissioner i didn't survive i'm living I'm not a survivor. I am actually the. No, as I'm saying, um, the, 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 the appointment regimes were different. Initially, as I was saying, I was appointed into a one by the Minister of Justice. That was his prerogative. I was appointed by uh, the Minister of Justice, was uh, um, Minister Patrick Chinamasa. Well, he knew my reputation, my political scientist, and so on and whatever. We go back to school to Goromonzi. He was our senior of the Catholic students when I was his junior and so on and whatever. So he knew who I am and we related also in the Catholic Church. So we had known each other for a long time. So he proposed that I should become a commissioner. So I went there and our chairperson was uh, uh, then Gulandebele. And then we had three others. It was a smaller one. So I was appointed. And then in 2007, when we had proposed, proposed that we should uh, uh, do away with the Electoral Supervisory Commission, it became the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. Already there were five commissioners that were there in uh, Bishop Siachitema, Sarah Kachingwe, Mrs. Ndlovu from Bulawayo, who was, and two others, I've forgotten who, the names, they just slipped my mind. And then it made, they 
that one had just been appointed when that came into effect, but they needed seven members. So from the ESC, two of us were taken. They were taken, shall I say, or chosen or whatever it is. So it was Commissioner Gambe and myself who were taken into the new to make uh, a body of seven uh, commissioners, including, of course, uh, Justice Chiwe, who was the chairperson. So as, when I got there, I was uh, made the deputy chairperson of the commission because he was already there and so on. So I occupied that space. And then um, there were some constitutional changes again in terms of how many commissioners should actually be in a, in a commission. Then they were raised to, in 2010, so there was also a call to, uh, there was a, a call, yes, for advertising and asking for um, applicants. And that's when we started to apply. I applied. I had the advantage of being there knowing quite a bit, and you know me. Um, so I applied, and we had also others that were applying and so on. So we had a uh, commissioner, um, Chigaro, for example, Commissioner Andlovo, for example, I was there in 2010, Commissioner um, Petronella Maconi and uh, Commissioner, Commissioner from Law and Commissioner Felto, and um, I've forgotten the name of the one who just resigned. And so we constituted the one that. And then we had a new chairperson when. Um, uh, just the way she was appointed to, is it, to, to, to the to, yeah uh, of the of the high court yes and then we the new chairperson who came on board Justice was Mita Justice Mtamba Nengwe Justice yes. Mtamba Nengwe for briefly yes for a yeah, brief period yes and I I remained his chairperson if I, do yes okay. I remained his chairperson and then by that time we were starting um, processes again for a new constitution. Right, mm -hmm. so uh, the current judge um, Ben Chachwayo is now in the Constitutional Court, and uh, and I, because of my background in terms of political science, working at SAPES Trust, mm -hmm. is the is the bureau chief, and so on. I had a lot of knowledge about politics in general and what is expected, and so we were appointed the two of us as um, what shall I call as consultants to assist. Uh, in the building up and making up of the committees that con the 13 committees that constituted the heads of whatever uh, com com the, 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 the one on information, the other one on legal, the other on executive, the other on gender, the other one on the chief dorm, and so on. The way the way those mm -hmm. so we were taken on as a consultants, and then it means that I had a lot of relationship with those persons, and I knew quite a number of them anyway. So we came up we were the consultants and Irene um, Irene um, she was in the Zimbabwe Human Rights Co yeah Human Rights uh, Association Irene Sonton is it mm -hmm. something like that yeah so there were three of us so I got to know quite a lot of them and so on and related very well and came up with these headlines on what areas that needed to be to be looked at and also we identified who were going to be leading those specific uh, constitutional uh, sub-subjects that were needed and around which laws were going to be formed. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I related with more or less, it was a big job actually, that one, because there were 264 members, because all, the, all members of parliament became part of that. That was in 19, no, in, yes, 1999, uh, when this was constituted and we were commissioners specific for that. Mm -hmm. And then everything else followed. But what, what have been your highlights, uh, Commissioner Zembe, in, in your career as, as, a, a, commissioner. as a commissioner or running or, a, or, a, or running? Actually, politically, in terms of the political science aspect, it's been very interesting, but also challenging. Yeah, but um, the highlights, I could say, that we were able to come up to lead the, the, the organization, to lead the body in the coming up of a new constitution. And it meant that we related with a multitude of stakeholders, even though we were actually uh, trying to advise the different bodies 
that constituted the different chapters within the constitution. So it was very, very exciting. And I learned a lot during those processes. And I met all types of persons. That was very interesting. I, I love people generally. I really enjoy people. And all this variety of people with different personalities and so on were able to work. And that was a milestone in itself, being part of that constitution making process. Mm. It was painful for me, for example, when that constitution was, was voted out. Mm. Remember the. Yeah, when they, lost, they, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. But mm. let, me, let me draw your mm. attention to the 2008 uh, uh, election. Yes. We the results were withheld for a long time. What was going on in that part? <laughs> and so what was going on? They'd been, they, they, I must admit that there were, there were challenges in terms of counting and so on and whatever. Even from what was taken there and what came out from this and so on and whatever. And therefore, there, there, there was need for a recount. A recount, you can imagine how many polling stations there were, over 10,000 and so on and whatever. And there was a lot of problem because of the time scale, because of the contestations, because of the number of candidates and so on and whatever, and things like that. So really, there was a need for a recount you know, of, the, of, the, of the results. So that is why it took that long to come up with the presidential elections, yes. But did you um, feel it was normal at that particular for, well, for normal results is, to be held for almost two months? I'm saying normal in terms, the normal is actually following the dictates of the law. That was is, is normal. That is the normal thing. So I, I'm not saying it was abnormal. It was unusual. And that was the only time that happened there. Let's, let's then fast forward to look at 2018. Yes. 2018, yes. yes. Um, again, there's a dispute of, uh, of electoral results. Mm -hmm. How do you compare 2008 and 2018? I'm not sure. They, I'm, I'm not sure when you say there's a dispute on the results of the last election. What do you mean exactly? I said there was a dispute because it ended up going to court. So there was a dispute, although it has been resolved by the courts. But mm -hmm. there was a dispute, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure. In terms of how do I compare with Joyd? Yes. I, I think. Uh, the basis for the 2018 uh, challenge to the and it's a, some it's everybody's right to do that. It was different because this came from the elections. The results had already been announced, right? Which was different from the other one. The, so the two or eight one were, were disputed before announcement. Before announcement, yes, because you can only announce when you've got the results. So while all the others had been announced, and so the presidential, it was the presidential, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. This, is, this was different. It was the wall. Whereas in this time, is actually contesting and challenging the, the outcome, the actual results. So the two phases, were, they, they were quite different in terms of uh, what led to a recount. And this one was not about recount. Well, it was about... Uh, well, the challenger will say the results have been representation, represented, there's been rigging, and so on and whatever. That's why it went to court and the submission of the V11s and so on and whatever, which was different from the other time. Some, yeah. some, some want to argue that in 2008, it's mm -hmm. because Zanu Piof was the one that was complaining. In, in 2018, it was because uh, the MDC was the one that was complaining about the results. Do you think that you were influenced by who was actually I, I, I don't know whether it was really ZANU PF in 2008 that was complaining, because it was a wall recount. After the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission itself had realized that there'd been problems in terms of counting, so we had to go back and look at all the results and so on and whatever. It wasn't the president that was, it wasn't the then president that was contesting. Whereas this one is the candidate who is actually uh, contesting the results after they've been announced. They did not yet been announced, so there's a difference. I know in 2008 some of mm. your polling officers were arrested in places like Slovela and stuff like that. They were accused uh, over allegations of having received money and compromised the election. Was, wouldn't you say that was undue influence? Uh, this is the first time that I'm hearing you say that, that I'm hearing that that they were actually in Slovela or whatever, they were, they, were, they were arrested and so on and whatever. I'm not aware of that. I'm not sure whether it came to the public domain. 
it actually, it actually, it actually did in 2008, it yes. Oh, well. yep. a, a number of headmasters and teachers were arrested who were part of the counting process, especially in Slovela, where I was covering the elections at that mm -hmm. particular time. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question would have, that wouldn't, wouldn't that have been, uh, you know, an in, in, uh, in you know, yeah, yeah. The disruption of an electoral process and the influence and due influence on it? Well, I cannot answer that question because really uh, I, 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 I'm not aware of that. Mm. So I can't answer that question really. Yeah. There's been mm. allegations mm. or maybe members of public believe that ZEC is biased mm -hmm. uh, towards certain political parties. Mm -hmm. What would be your, your addressing them? What would you say to those people? We, 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 we operate under the guidance of the law. And we follow the dictates of the law. When the results, you see, my, 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 the challenge that most people face is that the urban vote, there's no question about that. The urban vote, for example, I, I'll use the exact example. The urban vote would go to the opposition party for definite. But the rural vote would go to the ruling party, the current one. And that's the difference between, because in terms of the population, the urban vote, shall I say, is about 35%. And the remember that is, um, is uh, the rural vote. And that's where the votes are. That's where the votes are. So that explains this in terms of uh, the outcome of the, rural, of, the, of, of, of the elections. Even now, even now, when you go, even you look at the current parliament, for example, now, Oh, that's what we are referring to. Even then, when we do, if you read, you note that the, all the urban, almost all, probably, almost all the urban votes went to them, but the rural vote went to, to the other party, to the ruling party, but yes. What, what can be done to mm -hmm. ensure that people will regain confidence in terms of the independence of ZEC? Because it has been taking a serious knock I, didn't, I never called it a serious knock <laughs> at all. I, I say that's the political machinations of those that want actually to link us and call us biased towards the ruling party. As far as I'm concerned and with my experience, I have uh, not seen any bias because we've been, as far as we are concerned, very open and people have been allowed to come and question us and interview us like you're doing now and so on and whatever. The bias, of course, the bias, the bias in terms of access of information, we must admit that those that are in urban areas have more information than those in the rural areas. We can try as much as we can to go out, as we did in the, in the rural areas, to actually go and educate them. But they are limited. You can go and do that. Newspapers, the admin, the radio stations, sometimes they don't get to the places in vernacular and so on. So in terms of access to information, probably, you would not get the same information as people in urban areas. And even some of the political parties, Right, they would not spend as much time in the rural areas as what it's, it's difficult. You have to have the resources to actually go there and actually educate. So we would go, and the others may not have been able to go. But they their own views about they are likely to get this and that and whatever. And I mean, political parties always make promises of what they are going to be getting should they vote for me and so on and whatever. But so that is why. Yeah, but sitting mm -hmm. here right now. Mm. Would you, Madam Commissioner, uh, say that you have never, ever seen fiddling of results and cooking of elections by the Electoral Management Board in Zimbabwe? No, no. I can vote safe. It never happens. It never, I've never seen it. I've never mm. seen it. And I can vote and put my life on the, my head on the block to say I've never seen any fiddling of results that has happened. And I've been there and I'm very late and I know what is happening where and so on and what. And I'm always surprised. Where is the contestation? Where is the contestation? The Nduna case, for example, that you, you mentioned, mm -hmm. I am in charge of the commissioner in National Land Works. When I passed through Jagutu, on my way back to the announcement of the results, I asked the, 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 the young man in the, the ZEC official in Chegutu what had been the outcome. He told me that um, this guy, what's his name? 
It won the elections in Notinduna. So I said, ah, okay. And the, he sent the, 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 the results to the provincial officer here. And this is where the transposition happened. Whether it was gerrymandering, that it was by whatever, and so on and whatever. That is how it was announced. I actually did the announcement myself because I was doing for my province. I said, why, you know, I, 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 I maintained a straight face because I knew that Nduna had been, Dixon Nduna had actually lost the seat. So, but there was nothing, <laughs> the results were there and so on and whatever. But so, the onus, the onus was on the individual who had, who had lost his seat. They actually, with, there's a limited period within which one must actually approach the, the courts that are dealing with elections. But, but and he you, was out of time, but, yes. But, but you, say, mm. you say that you kept a straight face when you saw that the results were not the correct ones. Yes, I can't so, change them. They've been already, they've already, they are on the paper, mm. they've been put out on the notice board, and I am given a paper, and I can't say, there. I'm sorry, here there's a mistake, because they, they, they've come from the provincial office, they've not come, whatever, to the commission here, and these so are the what, whatever, what so whatever. You, have the power to say look this is wrong yes yes we said this was wrong but we do not have the power to actually change what has been submitted and the power only comes in advising the person that you should go to the electoral court for this hmm. and he started the process but he was out of time and the law is in us as they say the law is in us yes but on paper yes definitely in the count and so on really that was the, that was the but problem. looking at and the yeah looking at the manner in which you run elections yes what what aspects do you look at and think that these injure our reputation in the eyes of the public everything that we do would injure if we are not doing it properly if you are operating under outside the law it means it injures our our image but at, the point, it's, at certain points you've mm. operated outside the law like when the designing of the ballot paper. Mm -hmm. What about it? Electoral Act says mm -hmm. that the ballot paper should be singular. It should, in essence, it should go down and should not have two pages. That's what it said. It but didn't you have two pages. It. They were side by side. Yes, yeah. that is two pages. <laughs> no, it's not. Ah. It's one side. I mean, the end of the paper, then you go there. Of course, if someone say in retrospect, you should have just had a long uh, ballot paper. But we had not anticipated, yes, we had not, I already mean, anticipated that we'd have so many candidates, 20, 23 candidates. Some argue mm. that that design was meant to benefit. Uh, well, uh, some argue. Yes. Some argue. What is your Anybody can, can, can argue that. But, but is it not a fact? It's, it's a fact. Is what do you mean, what? Is that we... We, you we maneuvered. Yes. <laughs> you violated the, 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 the law at that particular point. Well, I, 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 um, that, that's being legalistic, and I am not a lawyer, as you say, but that was the paper, and that was the agreement that it should be printed, that, that whether violating the law. You see, there, there's also the element of cost. The paper was already here. Democracy yeah, is expensive, is it not? Well, it's, it is, mm. but it would have meant redoing the paper, asking for postponement of the elections and so on and whatever and so on and things like that. But there were considerations that were taken in, in time. Whether you call it gerrymandering or whatever, I think these are views of the persons. But as far as you are concerned, that was the battle of pain. There has been yeah. allegations that there's... I hope you are not staying again on no, that paper. No, yeah. no. Yeah. There, there have been allegations mm -hmm. that the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission mm -hmm. is is uh, infested by members of the security forces, uh, central intelligence, and the like, and, and numbers now, have been branded. Now, um, I, I remember <laughs> the war I, stopped in twenty in, in twenty seven in, in in two thousand. What was it? In nineteen ninety seven, is it? So that we had the elections in two thousand, wasn't it? The first ones was it in two thousand? Was it? Election? No, 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 no. Independence, nineteen eighty, right? 1980, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. mm. So, when people came out, came back from the bush, right? Anybody and everybody was free to apply. Initially, where did you have more persons that at the time to actually come? When I came in in, in um, 2001, 
they were seconded staff. We did not have a permanent, a permanent uh, electoral commission there. It was part time. It wasn't permanent with structures, with staff, with whatever. That only came in 2007. Only. And anybody and everyone was free to actually apply. And those that had been in the army, those that had been in the war, and that had, there was a glut, shall I say, a glut of, of persons that were, had been, uh, they had come back, they had certain experiences, and so on. So from 2000, when they, they, they came in, when, we, when I got on board, there was there, there were quite a number of free persons, not only from the army, from the army, minister of justice, some, some were seconded, and so on. There was, no, there was really no application then to be in the commission. So the commission... Uh, used the seconded staff from a number of institutions, the police, with teachers there, with personnel from the public service commission. It wasn't only the, the, the military that were there, mm. that would actually be stretching uh, the pond. They were there. And then when we became uh, independent in the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, so we came up with a structure of what the commission would be like and the staff members that would be able to fulfill it in terms of initially with 802 uh, posts that had arisen, although they were, oh, were cut down and now we had less than that even. That we needed, we came up with it. I was there, I was part of the person that we actually submitted on what we would require in terms of personnel from head office, from provinces to district. We came up with just above, I think it was 806 or something like that anyway, posts. And therefore, we advertised publicly and anybody and everybody was free to order. Now, what happened is that those that had been there seconded during this certainly had an advantage in terms of knowing what is required of an electoral commission. So we broadly and people actually applied. I was sitting at, 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 at the, the interviewing panel for the hierarchy. And when we appointed Sekramai, he was not a military man. He wasn't. And then the other post, the, 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 deputy, the, the deputy chief elections officer, the deputy chief in charge of administration, in charge of um, uh, elections, and in charge of, um, what was the other thing? There are three in charge of whatever it is now. It's called a now knowledge management a, a unit. Mm -hmm. Certainly because they, the advantage of having went there. And so we had a public whatever interviews. We interviewed about seven people for the post of CEO. We appointed Mr. Segarama after he had consent. Where for the post of the CEO, uh, administration we interviewed and uh, Mr. Mtema Sango, we had been doing administration in the army he got the post because of of uh, of his uh, answers and so on and the operations and elections Mr. Slaikwana then he had been, I actually found him there in 201, he had already he was, the, he was the spokesperson he was informed he had the account to make whatever qualifications and so on and whatever so that is and the DCO management and whatever it was a lady who was in the local government before and they were open and then the other posts, the other posts those were then we sent out those we I mean the seniors here to actually now go to the provinces and actually after advertising and interview persons that were actually available and then that could do there, there in terms of in terms of percentage it's not true to say we we, we, we we I think we had about I think it was twenty three or whatever was it twenty three percent or twenty three out of the full contingent of uh, then uh, about just under 600 posts that had been filled from the chief elections officer to the, 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 the office orderlies and so on and whatever. But someone would look at uh, then Nyigaya Ramba, who was with yes. the electoral supervisory commission, and at that particular yes. time he said he was not a soldier. And he had he was no longer. He was no longer a soldier. Yeah, he but, was uh, but, uh, but just after, after the election, mm -hmm. he's back. He's leading a, a military barrack right now. Yeah, well, 
how, how, how does someone become... Was he leading a military barrack? He was a soldier. He said yeah. he had resigned. Yes, he did. And then he got he back? He did. He, as a soldier. No, he didn't get back as a he soldier. He is a soldier right now. No, he's late. But he was a soldier for... <laughs> huh? He was... He, 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 well, if there was an opening, it doesn't stop you from actually applying and going back. When we constituted then, when we constituted, mm. when we saw, he left, he left, right? Remember they had been seconded. Do you remember that? He had been seconded. But those things, mm. don't you think are he, those, those things are the ones that lead people to believe that the people in the army today might still be in the army? Because we, of in the, the army, example, those yes. that are no longer in the army. Those who are at Zek hey. might still be part of the army. Ah, uh, no. Like for instance, I don't we, have seen, that. we have seen them being prosecutors. Uh, in the ooh, magistrate's ooh, court, ooh, people ooh. from the army. No, but not in Zeg. Not in Zeg. Not those that are in Zeg. So these people mm. who are making these allegations are hallucinating. I don't know. Hallucinating is not the proper word. They, I would say they are wrong. Hallucinating is that you are dreaming and dreaming, uh, you know, uh, you, they are, you dream dreams and then you dream, you come up with hallucinations. So it's just a way of, um, you know, um, painting the Zimbabwe electoral consumer with a black brush. But really, even there, there's no military militarization in ZEC. You know, there isn't. There isn't. There's no, no uh, chairperson except um, just, Justice um, Chiwese. Otherwise, every chairperson that has come in there has not been in the military and so on. Even if they were, the person would have been interviewed and so on and passed to get into that particular position. Do you think so the militarization aspect is just hanging over. You hear in a 15-year, 18-year-old saying this militarization is taking from what the elders are saying. And that is not true. There's no militarization in the Zimbabwe military commission. Are the ZEC commissioners the one really in charge of elections? Oh, yes. What do you mean? Yes, we are. Yes, I am. Yes. We are in charge. You have no... I have, I have no compassion. I have no apologies to make. I have no excuses to make. And I declare the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission is in charge of the elections and all, underline all, in uppercase electoral processes. You said, right up to the end. You said you're close to you're close to then Justice Minister Patrick Chinamasa, and I assume you still are. Yeah, but what is he got to do with that? Wouldn't you favor? He's your my friend? friend. Wouldn't you favor your friend in to do what? For his party to win? Oh, no, 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 no. I like you, right? And depending on which political party, <laughs> I may elect you or not elect you. But you are my friend, if I say so, mm -hmm. right? I've got friends. I've got friends across the political divide. I've got friends. But they've never mm. appointed you. Chinamas are appointed. But when was that? In the ESC, Electoral, Electoral, Electoral Supervisory Commission. Mm. That was in 2 1. Uh -huh. And what has he got? He's not the Minister of Justice anymore. He's not whatever and so on and whatever. And my appointment has come through interviews. Nana, Nana Chamisa were there. When Love Mo Moyo was sitting there. Um, my good friend Nube was sitting there and there were quite a number of uh, representation, representatives that way and I told you about the independent also group body of persons who are not in the commission or what but picked up because they are deemed to be fair and they will look at things fair who are sitting at the back and making their own whatever and you come up and I can say according to whatever the person who beat me from what I know is is Commissioner Felton in 2010. Mm. And I was there because of the legal aspects in what happened. So I know general not, but if you are going to ask me about section something and something, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I can vouch say that we operate independently as the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. I, I understand from my mm. sources that you are on your way out. Why are you go why are you leaving? Oh uh, my my term is twelve years, remember it's two terms. As I was saying in 2001, it was the prerogative of the Minister of Justice to recommend and appoint, right? And then in, in 2006 and whatever, after the dissolution, there was the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission under Justice situation. 
and the power was still lying in the hands of the minister. And then Commissioner Gump and myself, to constitute the seven members, I was selected to come from the old body to get to there. And there was Micah Chingwe, Mrs. Zinglo from Lawaya, Bishop Siachitema, uh, who was the other one? Uh, wherever they are, to make it seven and just the situation, of course, right? With, but after that, in 2010, then it's by application and interview by the Committee on Standing Rules and Regulations. How many commissioners are um, going to be there in 2023? Who are current? Who are, uh, how would I know? We, we are selected every 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 six years, right? I because I have said you see the, the in terms of the number and so on, the constitution, the current constitution, this is what is applied, right? It says and and the law is effecting from the date it is promulgated, right? And signed for in twenty thirteen. Right? So the team that is there, um except for Commissioner Magadi and Commissioner Moyo, who came in after because they had been engaged in some business or whatever and could not be appointed because... No, they came in actually to replace uh, Commissioner Nyati and uh, Commissioner Felto, who resigned, yes. right? When the announcements were being made, Commissioner Nyati just resigned by later and left the country, and uh, Commissioner Felto says, ah, I've done enough, I'm going back to academia. Right. So these two places had to be filled in. So as there was a public uh, advertisement, and these two were part of those that were actually uh, interviewed and go to the space. So in 2013, by 2013, in two, oh, because we had been appointed in 2010, it meant that by 2016, our term was oh. over. Yeah. And then there was a gain, and we were applying new law. And then there was also a call for applicants. And I qualified because of the new regulations. I qualified to apply and I applied and I am there. Now, the, depending on how they ask, once I have served the two terms, it means next year I'm no longer eligible unless they count on where the new constitution begins in 2013. So it means, but still I would exceed the term that is actually allowed. So next year, up the next, what is it? The next appointments, I do not qualify because I have saved the, the two terms after the promulgation of the new constitution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we going to have any memoirs from you on, on your journey? Oh yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. After I've done my father's uh, biography, he's late, may he rest in soul then I'm going to ask seriously, I'm going, not I'm seriously considering, I've been seriously considering it, but now I am going to do that. Are you going to be bluntly honest with that? Of course I am an honest person, what do you call, that's why you like me, I'm a very honest person, and I hold my head, and I'm appointed there, and everybody in there will vote me for 12 votes, whoever is on the committee, because I'm, 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 I'm very honest, they know me, and um, even you, if they come, should I tell them any, whatever. Should we expect any secrets, any shocking revelations <laughs> that would come through? <laughs> any? The, 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 the shocking revelation was that I have been in the commission mm. since 2001. That will make it 20 years plus. Right? Mm. Yes, that is the shocking revelation. Otherwise, in terms of shocking revelations, definitely I will talk about the challenges. It's not an easy exercise. The challenges of being there. But for me, it's been, I, I, I am very proud of having served in this uh, state institution. And I'll sing the praises. Not only that, but I've also been instrumental in setting up regional uh, principles on management. As I was saying, as they were saying, the principles of election management, monitoring and elections in the SADC region. I was part of the body, because I was already, that actually eventually came up with this. It has started in 19, uh, 1998, the process actually 1998. So by the time I came in, I was part of those that were looking at it and so and enriching it with Vanarindai Funde and uh, Bishop um, Makare and so on were part of that. 
and even the PEMO document, you will find my signature in 2003 when it came into effect to be applied from 2004. Mm. So I will write that. You, you've had this rich, this rich history of setting standards. Yes. But Zimbabwe appears when it runs elections. Mm. It sets the wrong standards. What Al wrong standards? Always contested elections. Okay, uh, because the people here contest. They don't want to accept the results as they are. They think that they are very political, they must do also whatever. Mm. Observers have noted weaknesses here and there, mm. and we have taken on board some of those. But no, even in their readings, they would say, they would say, I have not seen any way they said the elections were rigged. Have you seen them? In mm. no private, maybe, conversation. Mm. The but they could have been better. Yeah, they could have been better and improve on this side and improve on that side and so on, improve in this process and so on and whatever. But, the but EU, I've never said whatever. The EU mm. and, and, and the, the delegation that came from the United yes. States said that your electoral results were not, trans, were not verifiable. There Very, was a problem. Verifi the they were not verifiable? Yes. Where is that? In, in, in one of their reports, in uh, their reports. I've got, I've got the compendium of my, my, my rocks and the, the transmission of results was not transparent. Oh, I don't know what they mean. What they mean. Because we followed the results as determined by the law. And they questioned Whatever. the independence yes. of Z. Well, anybody is free to question anything. They are free to question anything. They have got their own reasons. We are under sanctions by the US, by the EU, and so on. And they've got their reasons for actually saying that. But do you think there's happened. something that can be done to ensure that all these issues are addressed? There's and... always room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. It doesn't matter when you, whether you think that, ah, this time, we did a very good job. But there's always, always room for improvement. Always. There's always room for improvement. And lastly, there, yeah. was, there was a shooting as people waited for results. Does Zek take any responsibility of what happened on August no. 1? No, we don't. Why not? Why would we? Why would we take responsibility? You are accused of stealing elections at that point. Uh, 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 uh. We are accused of being late in announcing results. And this was only three days before the five days were over. Actually, we were too early for some of them to say so. When they were... And Zek did not shoot anybody. Did Zek shoot anybody? It had, the, it had the power to... To what? To release results expeditiously. No, expeditiously is five days. And we did it expeditiously in three days. How expeditious can you get? So you... Hmm? Oh yeah, I'm very, my mind is very clear. My mind is very as white as can be. And God is my witness. My mind is very, very clear. Whatsoever. And I blame those that were actually instigating these young people and whatever to actually get onto the streets and come and break the gate at um, the Harare Conference Center where we were lodged and so on and whatever, demanding results. Why? Don't you the think time was not, was, uh, was not up. Don't you think being too legalistic, uh, rigid, rigidly legalistic, is actually the reason why our elections are always disputed? What do you mean legalistic? To say to even say three if, days, three even days, if you have and the legal, results, the legal even position have, is five yeah, days. But, but even and if, if we have, announce the results three days before the end of the whatever, is that being legalistic? We but if you have the results in 24 hours, why not announce them? We didn't have the results in 24 hours. We were announcing all the constituencies. We were announcing the councillors. We were not announcing, and so we just put a board and with the results. We were announcing results as they came. From the very first way we had results for a, a constituency, we were announcing them from, I think, from the first, from the third, in urban areas where the results came. We announced them from the, even from the second day, we were making announcement on constituency results. But you, 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 yes. you, you were, but you were in very other systematic fair, in doing uh, whatever, it. Whatever. Yes, we were systematic. You, you would, you would do three that favored Zanu PF, three no, that no, favored no, no, MDC. No, 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 You're no, balancing. No, 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 no. Is that no, how no, they're no, coming? No, 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 no. We never did that. As the results came, mm. as we finalized them, we announced the results. It was not balancing in Act 333. Mm. That, that is not how correct. How would you announce I'm results about. from Gokwe, Nembuzia? first when Harare South is just here. Harare South, you know what is Harare South is like? Mm. How many how many voters were in Harare South? Just about 50,000. Around, around about. Who? Harare South? 
you must be joking. Now, Rari is out. 50,000. <laughs> you have your figures wrong. I don't know exactly how many, but Rari is out currently. If they were going to, to, to demarcate it into constituency using the numbers, they, it will actually constitute about three constituencies. But the person who but won Rari is out at about 27,000, and they beat uh, uh, Shadrach Mashaya Mombe, we had about around 23,000 or something and then the other person is 6,000 it, it wouldn't be more than 50 to 60,000 people who voted in yeah. that voting is one thing and not voting is another mm. it's my right to vote or not to vote those that didn't go did not go but how, how do, how do how, I drive how do you them to how do you explain how mm. do you explain that what? you have results that are kachana gachenile and you don't have the ones that are next to your yeah because kachana le probably they've got a smaller space and it's easier the numbers are easier and so on and because they come during the time when they are there and we get those results early the persons they are there they get their results early and they send us here Harare is something they that they will take their time and whatever and so on and whatever yes we had the results i, I must say i was not uh, in Arare when the announcement of the constituencies were there. I was still here in Marsh West because Marsh West is big, Kariba, Nyami Nyami and whatever. So I was still here. So it was only when I saw them announcing the results when I was in my room that I said tomorrow morning 6 a.m. I must go. I must go back. Although I still wanted to be in the constituency. So if, yeah. you, if you leave mm -hmm. elections, what are you going to do, ma'am? I'm going to write. You're going to write? Yes. I'm going to write. No, thank you very much. I will allow you just from your heart to just talk to the people of Zimbabwe yes. about what we're discussing, your vision for, for Zimbabwe and the elections in the future. My vision for Zimbabwe is that uh, electoral processes and elections, one, they're accessible to people and that people will understand exactly what is involved. And I would urge the people that really want to actually participate want as high participation levels as possible and the electoral processes now we are going to be now preparing for delimitation as many people our voter education must actually ask people to go and register so that when the time comes they are on the voters roll and the 16 year olds now should actually go and get their stupas their id identity cards because come 2018 they are adults to go actually involved so we begin there. So I see a bright future. I see a period where the outcome of elections, my vision, are not contested. Are not contested. But tell me one country where there are not cases that are going to court because they are seeing that, because that has happened there, and there are shootings and so on and what. At least there's not been any shooting. I don't know about the case that we're talking about and so on and whatever. Yeah. It's not violent. It should have been. I went to Nigeria in 2011 for the elections. You don't want to go there again for elections. Where there were mass killings in areas where Buhari had lost. Real, real murder cases and so on and whatever. Outrunning, overrunning even other constituencies. You don't want to be doing that. And I'm hoping for a safe future for anybody who is 18 and above to actually exercise their own. Our, our, currently, what I'm aging, that we begin uh, voter education about being a citizen, what does it mean, from primary school. So that by the time these young persons get to 18, they are informed and they can make up their minds quickly because that will be based on knowledge. And so we want, we already had an agreement with the Ministry of, um, then it was called Ministry of um, Education, that is the primary level and secondary, to actually go out there and actually begin, not so much as voter education, but the education of being a citizen. What does the vote mean? What rights do you get? And so on. Talk them, tell them and teach them about, about rights and the importance of those rights as they apply to them and as they apply to um, the generality of the Zimbabwe population. I think that is the way to go so that by the time they get to voting age, they are informed so that we can hopefully then the technology also would have improved so that we don't have to be matching Maruzeva with, 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 uh, 
oral way to, of course that is always important that people will have access more access and are in a position they are knowledgeable they are taught in time and the, the the process now now is to actually begin the education of the population long before the election so that they are informed so that we are not catching them at the last minute and some get confused and some others whatever and so on and therefore we don't get these accusations and so on so that by that time our elections will be declared always by everybody that they were free and fair and I really wish well for the country. And when I, I will uh, certainly, uh, I will write about it. Thank you the very best much. Seller. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now this uh, has been an amazing uh, uh, conversation that we have had with one, with the longest serving uh, member of electoral administration in Zimbabwe, Vachi yes. uh, Southern, the Southern Region. Um, <laughs> Uh, Joyce Leticia Kazembe, yes. an amazing uh, woman who has also who has a rich history in the media uh, industry in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and she was here on this program, the Free Talk, proud, brought to you in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation and Heart and Soul TV and Radio. And till next time, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. This is Free Talk in partnership with Frederick Newman Foundation, our partners in free speech. Free speech is the center of development of any nation.